because of many factors. Um, first of all, we have a high propensity to consume U.S. products. And that advantage is, well, first of all, we're, we're right in your, I would say you're in our backyard, but you might say we're in your, we're in your front yard then. And so proximity is a key factor. Um, the fact that we're just right next door to you um, is a perfect place to, 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 to launch off if you're new to export or a perfect place to expand your business if you're already in the business. Um, secondly, I would say, you know, because of the, the we have a high, um, tourism is such a major industry and again, U.S. tourists are probably, it could range anywhere from 50% of the tourists that come to some of the Caribbean countries to nearly 90% like a country like the Bahamas. So in terms of tourists that visit our shores, um, most of them are American. So already you have your own, you know, American people visiting and a lot of them demand, you know, U.S. products, you know, they, whether, whether it's they're looking for a Burger King to have a, a burger in our markets or whether, you know, they just feel more comfortable knowing that the product comes from the United States. Also the fact that the United States is known um, in terms of the products that come from the United States and the companies that are dealing out of the United States. You're known for your quality, you're known for your reliability, your excellent customer service, your innovativeness. So there is just a generally high profile and high acceptance and knowledge of U.S., the United States. The U.S. is a very good brand. So you, you'll find also that, you know, Companies and um, consumers are willing to pay a little bit more because the product came, it's a product of the USA. So that's, that's a, a big plus. Um, added to which, you know, because of the close cultural ties that we have with the United States in more modern times, I mean, like I said, historically, our, our islands were colonized by the Europeans, but in, in, in recent years or decades or centuries, we have had a much stronger relationship with the United States because you are, you know, the, the, the major country in, in, our, in our hemisphere um, in the world. And so there's a strong cultural influence, not to mention, you know, just some simple things like cable TV. We get, uh, you know, we get US TV programming right there in our countries. So we're exposed a lot to advertising from the United States. So we, in, in a lot of instances, we even know the products before they even make it, make it into our market. So there's so many advantages. And, you know, to speaking of tourists coming to the, from the United States to our markets, a lot of our Caribbean people live in the United States or visit the United States quite, um, there's a great number of us um, living in the States and also having re relatives and visiting the United States. So there's also that knowledge of the market. They, in fact, I, I think I could go on in terms of the benefits, but I mean, clearly there are, there are disadvantages. But I think it's just a market that is you know, very open and accepting of U.S. products. I would, I would definitely recommend that they have a look at the Caribbean. Because first of all, you, you said small and new to export. Because the Caribbean is probably one of the easier markets to get into. And as I said before, because they are um, so import dependent, they don't have as much regulation and requirements to get into their markets. They still do have some form of regulation and import requirements. However, I, th I, get, I, I know <laughs> that it tends to be easier to get into the Caribbean than see other ex export markets across the world. Now, bear, having that plus, bear in mind that it's also because of that factor, because they're relatively open markets, there is a lot of competition in the region. So um, what I would say to the exporters, make sure you're clear on what your plan is to deal with this market. If you're trying to sell across the region, then you look at a strategy that would best suit your company's um, abilities and uh, maximize and also make it more efficient for you to, to target the market. Like, um, certainly have a look at, you know, identify the top markets in the Caribbean for your type of product and probably find a way of identifying suitable partners. And I, I just like to point out the factor that in a lot of cases, it's best suited to just find one strong partner in each market. Because exclusivity, I always say this, exclusivity is not a bad word in the Caribbean. In, in, in fact, it's almost beneficial because of the size of our markets to just deal with one strong partner in each market. You know, there are exceptions, but by and large, that is what we recommend. Now, again, for the smaller markets, we suggest if you can find a uh, wholesaler distributor out of one of the hubs like South Florida or um, out of Puerto Rico or somewhere like that, that would better suit you for the smaller markets. So basically recommending a, 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 a two-pronged approach of direct export sales to a strong import partner in uh, the larger territories, our larger markets, and an indirect approach through a wholesaler distributor out of some base, you know, South Caribbean base uh, out of the United States. 
That's pretty easy to answer because the Caribbean basically um, mirrors or sort of follows whatever the trends are that are happening in, in the United States. Because the United States basically has a very strong influence across the region. So what you'll find is whether it's the health trend where people are eating, living more healthy lifestyles and therefore demanding healthier foods to eat, or the trend where they have dietary requirements or restrictions such as gluten-free or fat-free or whatever it may be, that is definitely a trend that has taken off uh, for several years now and it's growing. What I would caution though before, um, you know, a lot of people who have maybe organic products, there is a demand for organic. However, the, the fact of it being a higher priced product, it's more a niche opportunity in the Caribbean. I think it will always be because of the fact that um, they tend to be a higher priced product. So value is always very important in the region. Certainly the busier lifestyles that are happening across the region where more of the um, adults are working outside of the home, particularly the, the females, you'll find there's a greater increasing demand for convenience foods or easier to prepare foods. So that is a trend. Um, certainly we're eating more fresh foods, although um, packaged foods are continuing to grow and will grow, there is a demand for more fresh fruits. So you see if in the exports from the United States increases in the exports of fresh fruits and vegetables, etc. And just generally there's some um, growth in specialty in certain niches. Now I, I speak specifically about, uh, I'm speaking generally about the Caribbean. Of, of course there are individual markets that have specific uh, trends and demands and it varies across the region. In terms of challenges, because you, you heard me speak about the benefits and the opportunities that exist in the Caribbean, I think the biggest challenge um, is although the Caribbean collectively is quite a, a sizable and significant market, I mean representing in terms of value added food products nearly two billion dollars in, in export sales per year, um, which is a great opportunity, it takes several little markets to make up that big opportunity, which means that an, a U.S. exporter that's trying to sell to the re region has to deal with lots of small markets to build up a great export portfolio. Now, having said that, I mean, we can have a market as large as the Dominican Republic, which is over, uh, consumes over 400 million in U.S. Um, food and beverage uh, products, but then you have smaller islands that maybe only buy a couple million every year, you know? So the truth is, um, if a company is trying to sell to the region and they, and they want to sell across the region, it can be quite a nightmare, I mean, not a nightmare, but quite challenging to deal with the little smaller individual markets. And that is why I always recommend maybe it's, you could use a wholesaler distributor for the smaller territories, but definitely focus on the bigger markets. So in a way, it can be challenging to manage these markets because having said that, like I said, a lot of these, everybody, you know, which is quite natural, feels that they need to get special attention. So you may find that you're, you're investing a lot of time and effort on a relatively small market opportunity. So that can be a challenge, working out how is the best way to service and to properly you know, um, manage markets, particularly the smaller ones in the region. But it can be done. And like I said, there, there are many ways in which you can approach the region and do, it so, do so successfully. Well, the good thing uh, um, about some of the programs and activities that Food Export offers, I think they offer a, a range of services that can help you, first of all, um, explore the opportunities in the export market. And so, some, of the op some of the activities that I think um, address that, that particular um, need or that partic particular um, desire would be, for example, their buyer's mission. I think that to us a very important event every year that we have specific to the Caribbean, and it also includes Central America region, is our Caribbean and Central America buyer's mission. And I, I usually recommend that as a first step for any company that's not actively selling to the region right now, that they um, participate in this event that we have every year in June in Miami. And it basically provides an opportunity to meet with uh, anywhere, uh, quite a large group of anywhere from 15 to 18 buyers coming from individual Caribbean markets and one or two, uh, about three or four of the Central American markets. And I, I, I say that's a great place to start because it gives you that opportunity to meet with the buyers directly, um, potentially drum up some new business, but also learn about the markets 
you know, face to face from the, what I consider the experts, because I always tell um, companies, you know, we have a lot of information through our research and our knowledge and, you know, just even my knowledge of the markets, but the best um, consultants that you could have or the best experts you can have are the actual business people that are bringing in products on a daily basis from the United States and from the world, because they can, they're the ones that know their markets intimately and have the hands-on experience of trying to bring in um, products into their marketplace to sell. So um, definitely that is a great opportunity um, if you are a company that's a little more further along the process of, get, of selling to the Caribbean market and you've identified specific markets that you'd like to sell to, I strongly recommend the Market Builder Program or, or, or or a focused trade mission, and I'll speak to you about both of them. But why I say the market builder, it helps um, with doing a, a little in-depth research specific to the product that you're interested in selling to in a specific Caribbean market. Because um, unfortunately, because there's so many markets, we and there are differences in each market, we can't do a general market builder uh, for the Caribbean. We have to be very specific, like I want to sell to the Dominican Dominican Republic or I want to sell to the Cayman Islands, you know, you have to be specific and that is a good way of getting market research and then followed up by after the research actually making contact with the trade about your product and identifying uh, 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 f three or four or five or six interested um, trade contacts that would like to speak to you further about possibly doing business with you. So that, that is a good program that not only provides the market information and intelligence for you on a specific product for a specific market in the Caribbean, but also provides you with potential uh, business partners for the future. So um, that, that I'd recommend. Ad additionally, we also organize um, on an annual basis, Usu it's usually one market in the Caribbean or two, one or two markets in the Caribbean per year, what we call a focus trade mission. That has an element of research to it, but the most important thing is, is we go as a group to the market and visit the market, visit the retail trade, meet, the big part of it of course is meeting one-on-one -on -one with um, trade contacts that know you're coming and have expressed interest in having meetings with you. And that is another opportunity for you to focus on a specific market and hopefully make uh, establish potential business contacts and make ultimately identify a key business partner for you in that particular market. You also get to meet with the local um, Foreign Agricultural Service, USDA Foreign Agricultural Service representatives who serve you in the Caribbean. We have two offices, or we actually have three offices in the Caribbean. Um, the two main offices, one based in Miami, which covers most of the Caribbean region, and one in Santo Domingo, which covers the Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Jamaica, and with a sub-office in Kingston in Jamaica. So, you know, th these, are, these are programs that we recommend and uh, certainly think would aid you in your efforts to try and expand your export business to the Caribbean region.